This video will look at English Language Unit 2, Writing. The first thing that you should look at are the instructions on the examination paper. So, this particular paper will ask you about quality. It says in this section you will be assessed for the quality of your writing skills. The quality is vital. This means not only the accuracy of your writing, but also your vocabulary choices the skills you use and the organisation of your writing. You'll also notice um, half of the marks are awarded for content. Content and organisation relates to how you show your understanding of audience and purpose, detail and development of ideas, opinions and arguments, paragraphs, techniques and vocabulary. So that's 50% of the marks. The other 50% of the marks are awarded for sentence structure, punctuation and spelling. So that means that you should be using simple, compound and complex sentences, a range of punctuation, accurate spelling, tense and agreement. And that's 50% of the marks, so really important to help you get a good grade. You'll also notice this phrase, purpose and audience. Now, purpose and an audience, along with the format and tone, are crucial and must be suitable for the task set. You'll also notice that it asks you to write between 350 and 500 words. And that is roughly about one and a half to two sides on, you know, of your answer booklet, depending on the size of your writing. So do not waste time, though, counting words. Most students will write about 250 words per A4 side. In this particular paper, the students were asked to write a lively article for a teenage magazine with one of the following titles, My Kind of Music, My Kind of Fashion, or My Kind of Movie. The first thing that you need to do is to establish the purpose. So why are you writing? Is it to inform, to persuade, entertain or perhaps to explain. So establish first of all what is the purpose. The next thing that you need to notice is the tone that is suggested and here it asks you to write a lively article and the word lively suggests light-hearted, possibly quite humorous writing. The next thing that you need to do is to identify the format and here you're asked to write an article. So in an article, you know that it must include headings, subheadings, the name of the writer, etc. can be used for an article. But don't wait, waste any time at all sort of drawing pictures and graphics. It's, you know, the, the paper is there to examine your writing skills, um, not anything else. The other thing that you need to do is to identify the audience. And in this particular article, um, the, it's been asked to write for teenagers. Um, so you have to adapt your vocabulary choices to fit the audience and your audience will tell you whether you are writing formally or informally. Um, however, you should always remain you know, in standard English. You're also asked to write about one of the following titles and it's important that when you do have options make sure that you choose the one that you can write most knowledgeably about. So think about the topic you have strong opinions on and plan for the range of ideas that you're going to cover. It's very tempting to move straight into the writing but you will notice that you are asked to plan your work. So planning is vital and you should be spending about five to ten minutes in this um, in the exam for this. So how do you start? Be clear about the purpose, audience, format and tone for your writing. Why are you writing? Who are you writing for? How should writing be presented? Formal or informal? Informative or persuasive? Explanatory or entertaining? You should spend five minutes planning what points, ideas, details or arguments you'll include and establish what techniques you'll include, but don't overdo it. OK, so let's have a look at an example. Read the candidate's response below. What has the candidate done well and what could be improved? My kind of movie. November 21st. That is the date that my life changed for the better. And why is that, I hear you asking? Well, that is the date that I took my seat in the front row of Catching Fire Midnight Premiere.
The titles rolled up and I held my breath for what I knew was going to be an epic adventure. So to begin with with this piece, we have a clear heading with the use of the phrase, my kind of movie. It's perhaps an engaging opening, so the reader wants to know why, for example, their life changed for the better. We also have the use of rhetorical questions, which is used to engage the reader. However, there are some spelling errors. So you can see here on the last phrase, I knew was going to be an epic adventure and knew is spelt incorrectly. And at the end of it, then tension is effectively established and emphasised with the exclamation mark. OK, so here's the next one. The new phenomena. I have to admit, after the first instalment of the eagerly awaited Hunger Games saga graced our screens, I thought that it simply couldn't get any better than that. The intense action, exciting new world and heart-stopping romance was too much to handle. So yes, I'll be honest, I was a little sceptical before watching the second movie in this much-loved franchise. I really couldn't imagine it meeting my sky-high expectations. Well, boy, was I wrong. This movie is one for the recorded books with everything from gory violence to undying love. I think it even beats Twilight. Here's sharp intake of breath. Oh yes, it is just that good. OK, so to begin with, the article itself is organised with subheadings. And we have sentence con control to begin with. So I have to admit, comma, after the first instalment. So there's some control there with the sentences. However, the word instalment is spelt incorrectly. Um, Grey star screens, we've got some exciting verb choices that are used there, or, or you know, more original verb choices. And with the phrase, the intense action, exciting new world and heart-stopping romance was too much to handle. So you have this wide and varied vocabulary use as well. We've also got, remember that this particular article is aimed at teenagers, and if you look at the second paragraph, so yes, I'll be honest, we also have this conversational tone, which shows that this particular candidate is clearly aware of the audience. And then we have the use of the word sceptical, which is more ambitious vocabulary here. And then, well, boy, was I wrong. We have the use of the first person, which helps to engage the reader. Um, we also have some strong opinions, which is something very much to be um, included in this section. So with the use of from gory violence twi and dying love, I think it even beats Twilight. So strong review of positive features here. And then, you know, at the end with the uh, here's sharp intake of breath. That's what we mean when we talk about a lively style of writing. Right, next section then, the evolution. So this is a different one. Everything in Catching Fire is bolder, better and definitely more fierce than the world we experience when watching The Hunger Games. The characters have evolved from the first instalment. They are harsher and more desperate as the capital has moulded and manipulated them for its own selfish gain. But yet the passionate love they possessed is still there. The heart-burning desire to protect the ones they love from the dangers they've experienced firsthand. And Katniss, she's just as rebellious as ever. So, we have the use of comparatives here with bolder and better. Um, we do, unfortunately, though, have comma splicing. So, comma splicing is when you're using commas incorrectly. And, you know, the, the comma should come um, where there is a natural pause in the writing or before, uh, you know, or including in a list. But here we have comma splicing where we've got a comma that's being used in, you know, where there doesn't need to be one. So that's called comma splicing. Um, we also have um, the use of connectives, but yet connectives are quite useful, well, very useful, um, for showing a more sophisticated style of writing. So remember to try to bring those in in, in your writing. So use, you know, use to link ideas and contrast rather than using other kind of simple connectives such as and. And at the end of this particular um, paragraph, we've also got the varied and controlled sentences. A fierce female lead. The main reason for my intense love, OK, so maybe obsession is a better word for the Hunger Games franchise, is the feisty empowerment that female protagonist Katniss Everdeen brings to the world of wimpy female lead characters. She is the symbol of rebellion 
and holds the power to completely change the world she lives in. This is exactly what I like to see. Now, I'm not saying that the Bella Swans of our generation are weak and pathetic, but that once in a while it's refreshing to see a girl who can actually fend for herself. I mean, the whole damsel in distress storyline is kind of getting old now. Okay, so we have the alliteration, which isn't overdone, with a fierce female lead. Um, and also, we, you can see here we've got a mistake with the, the H for Hunger Games, which should be in capitals. If it's a proper noun, then you should use capitals. So we've got some issues there with capitalisation. Um, also using specialist language through the use of franchise. Um, spelling error for feisty, although it is you know quite an ambitious word that it's spelt incorrectly. Um, this is exactly what I like to see. Um, so we've got the variation of sentences here, and here's an example of a short sentence that's being used. Um, and then with swans, we've got a um, apostrophe apostrophe that's used in, incorrectly. And then right at the end, I mean, the whole damsel in distress storyline is kind of getting old now. So again, we have that appropriate tone that's being used. The actors. Another compelling thing about this movie is the fact that all of the actors can actually, well, act. I think this is an achievement in itself. From hunky heartthrobs Josh Hutcherson and Liam Hemsworth to the much admired and self-deprecating Jennifer Lawrence. And the main thing that strikes you about these people is that they're absolutely genuine people. There is no deaverish behaviour here. They're just normal people with the same passion for the franchise that us crazy fans have. And that really makes the movie all the more special. But wait, let's not forget the new kids on the block, Sam Claflin and Jenna Malone. They are funny, very talented and bring a whole new essence to the saga that we so adore. OK, I do apologise there if I've mispronounced some of the actors' names. OK. So we have the use of accurate use of parenthetic commas to begin with. Um, we do have here, though, when you go on to the next bit, um, from Hunky Heartthrobs, Josh Hatcherson and Leon Hemsworth, we have some verbless um, sentences here. Um, at the end there, with uh, us crazy fans, we have a sense of unity, which makes the reader feel that they're part of it. And as you move towards the end of the paragraph, we have some well-developed ideas. So yes, Catching Fire is definitely my kind of movie. With tense action, a gripping storyline and tons of eye candy, what more do you want? There is simply something for everyone. So if you haven't already, march down to your local cinema and watch the tale of Katniss continue. I assure you, you won't be disappointed. The conclusion is clearly indicated with the use of the phrase, so yes. Um, and again, it links back here to the um, question title. So it's asking my kind of movie. So it's um, reiterating those phrases from the actual question itself. Uh, again, we have the use of the rhetorical question. And so if you haven't already, so we've got a direct address there to the reader. And march down to your local cinema. The use of imperative to command the reader is effective. And in the final sentence, I assure you, so um, the writer is giving reassurance to um, the reader as well that they won't be disappointed with the movie. So if we were to look at the strengths and weaknesses of this particular piece, um, it's wholly fit for purpose, well-developed ideas, the writing is coherent and logical. A confident use of language and technique, not overdone. Clear and sustained awareness of reader. Carefully organised paragraphs using subheadings and controlled sentences. If we could pick out any area for improvement, then it would be to proofread the work carefully. Because there are lots of you know silly mistakes throughout it, which will obviously bring the mark down. Um, that probably doesn't wouldn't need to be like that had it been proofread at the end. So, top tips for English language um, unit two writing section. Ensure your tone is appropriate to the task and audience. Make sure you have a range of ideas to write about. Make sure that you develop your points and arguments in detail and do not change your point of view halfway through. Have a clear sequence to your writing, be logical. Use stylistic techniques, but 
you know, don't overdo it. Theory sentence structures and vocabulary and proofread your work carefully. So check your spelling, full stops, capital letters, vocabulary, etc. And try to be ambitious. Okay, I'm quite conscious of this next slide. Use PAFT to plan. So to begin with, purpose. Why am I doing this piece of writing? Think about your audience. Who is it for? Format. So what is the style or layout for your particular question? And finally, tone. So what would best suit the above? Formal, informal, serious, humorous, lively or muted? So if we practice using that acronym, PAFT, BBC Wales is looking for teenagers to appear on a television programme about their lives and interests. You have decided to apply to appear on the programme. Write a letter to BBC Wales persuading them to select you for the programme. OK, so the first thing that you need to look at is the purpose. So, trying to get chosen for a TV show. That's the purpose of the question. The second thing, OK, so still looking at purpose, it's talking about your life interests. If we're looking at audience, then we know the audience is adults at BBC Wales, so producers of the show. And format is letter. It's going to be formal because it's for the BBC in a sort of application. And finally, if we're focusing on tone, it's persuading them to use you in the show. So it should be a mixture of formality with lively, humorous content to show your personality. This slide shows you how you would plan your response. So your introduction might begin with who you are, where you're from, um, why you're interested. Might move on then to your family life and your home, then to your hobbies and interests, and then to why you'd be a good choice. So what makes you different? Perhaps include an anecdote about your life, um, what people will learn from you. And then your conclusion should be your conclusion and hopes for contact. So now that I've shown you how to do that, it would be a good idea for you to just spend two minutes using PAFT alone. So, the government is planning to make all students stay in school or college until the age of 18. Write the speech you would give to your class on this subject. And then, this is another example. A supermarket chain is planning to build a new store on land, which is currently used by local youngsters to play sport. Write a letter to your local newspaper, giving your views on this plan. So, just to recap, when you're using PAFT, you're focusing on purpose, audience, format and tone. And finally, year 11. Good luck.